And here we are once again with New Article Day, although this occasion is actually New Chapter Day. This time we are bringing you a paper that explores the Kolyuch Jodowerin narrative. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Kolyuch Jodowerin, the shorthand version of this is in the 1950s and 60s. It was not uncommon for Welsh-speaking communities, Welsh-speaking rural communities, to be displaced by the British state in order to clear land for the creation of reservoirs. Uh, Trewerin, uh, most uh, famously associated with a reservoir that now feeds Liverpool. Um, in 1962, there was a protest response to this in the form of a mural on the side of an abandoned building in Llanrusted. You can see the site of the original uh, up above me. This isn't the original mural, um, it's the location upon which the original mural was painted. The mural has been recreated many, many times uh, since the 1960s. Um, but relatively recently, in the last two years, it became the subject of what were described as attacks. Uh, most notably, a large black and white Elvis uh, graffiti was painted on top of it. And then there was talk about whether the, whether the actual wall upon which the mural had been painted had been deliberately knocked down. And there's some question marks over that. But it doesn't really matter whether the damage was intentional or accidental or incidental. What matters was the response to that damage. And what we saw was a mass replication of this type of mural. Well over a hundred, not just in Wales, we saw examples in England, we saw examples in Scotland, we saw examples in parts of the United States as well. And so I wanted to explore a little bit about um, the way in which these murals have spread, where they are located, and what story do the murals tell us today about Welsh identity, Welsh nationalism, um, and just uh, and also just to try and monitor the, the condition and the way in which people respond to these murals. Um, so about a year, year and a half ago, I started mapping these murals. And there'll be a link uh, below this video um, to the map. And there'll also be a link to um, not just the chapter that you can see here, but the whole book in which this chapter is contained. Um, one of the things I was really interested in exploring was this narrative of um, Cobrich Jodowen and murals being painted all across Wales. In media outlets, that was the pretty standard narrative. These murals are found everywhere in Wales. Um, not really the case. That's one of the things that the mapping project has shown to us. Um, that in parts of Wales that have uh, strongholds in terms of the Welsh language and strong um, support bases for political parties like Plaid Cymru or the Yes Cymru movement, um, you see a large proliferation of these murals. Um, but if you go around to other parts of Wales, especially along the border areas, southern, uh, southeastern Wales, um, you go into the Brecon Beacons, very, very few. And I think there is a correlation um, between the more anglicised parts of Wales and where you do not see these murals as much as where you do see them. Um, that's not to say that you don't see these murals in borderlands, which is part of what this uh, broader publication is exploring, the archaeology um, of borderlands. Um, if you go up to uh, the northeastern portion of Wales, um, certainly in and around Wrexham, Cross Flintshire, for instance, um, you do see uh, quite a number of murals, uh, but a lot of them have been destroyed or vandalised. Um, and I think what we're seeing there is a narrative of contested cultural landscapes. You're seeing a sort of a re-emergence of a Welsh-speaking, Welsh nationalist movement in those parts of the country, but there's also pushback against it. Now, whether that pushback is along the grounds of Anglo-nationalism, British nationalism, or something else altogether, we don't know. The people who are putting graffiti on the graffiti tend to not to be very forthcoming with their reasons as to why they're doing this. So that remains a question mark. But I think at the very least we can say there is a sense of um, a contested landscape in that part. So if um, if you take the time to, uh, to look through the article, and we've included a number of images of the mural as it evolves, um, we do a little bit um, about the um, Chilewellan story itself, the story of how the rural community um, protested against its demise, um, but also the way in which the community had to respond to it. And we've seen remarkable um, archive images here from Gwyneth Archives um, of the um, excavation and removal 
of human remains uh, from the, the burial ground in Tyrone. I mean, that's, that's, that's a really enigmatic image. Um, but as we go through, we start exploring, um, there you go, that, that's the image of um, the Elvis um, uh, graffiti, which sort of kick-started uh, this whole movement. Um, I see there are a lot of images here. We've got the example from Bridgend, which is often uh, portrayed as being the second Coventry de Wenham mural. There are a couple of people who actually have earlier claims to this, but that's that's explored in the article. Um, this is certainly the, probably the second most famous um, Coventry de Wenham um, mural uh, example. Um, so we start exploring things like geographies, um, where these examples are found. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis, uh, for example, uh, uh, the examples here between Corwen and uh, Llangollen, um, where you saw some quite striking responses to the graffiti with swastikas being painted over it and then the whole thing being uh, painted over with green paint. Um, really quite striking. You know, what, what narrative is that telling us about both Welsh nationalism and how some people in Wales are responding to Welsh nationalism. If indeed we associate Coventry to Llywelyn with Welsh nationalism, I make a presumption that we do, um, but is that presumption accurate or inaccurate, overstated? Um, that's perhaps a, a question to explore over time. Um, I do try to be a little bit provocative with the article and this section here, motivations, nationalism or keeping up with the Joneses. Um, here, I'm posing um, the question of are Coventry to Llywelyn murals created because people want to commemorate the community of Llywelyn? Are they producing Coventry to Llywelyn murals because they are they see themselves as part of a burgeoning Welsh nationalist movement? Or are they painted Coventry to Llywelyn murals because somebody else has painted one and they want one? Now Frankly, the, 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 the answer to this is it's, it's a bit of everything, but I, I do have on record, because of the interviews that I've been conducting as part of this paper, um, good evidence to suggest that one of the main motivations for people doing this is somebody else, one village or one town over, painted one, and they wanted one. So, in terms of motivations for making this, well, yeah, commemoration and nationalism is part of it, but there are other narratives as well, which, are, which are, I think are well worth being aware of in terms of understanding uh, this movement. Um, this section explores a little bit of geography. We also get a chance to talk about some of the other um, what I describe as Kovyuch variants. Um, uh, this example um, from uh, Monarch Lochdi, um, produced by uh, Alexander Velke, um, uh, explores again displaced Welsh communities, this time exploring the idea of um, military purchases of lands and displacements of communities. And we see something similar in relation to Cobiach Epint. Um, and we see a few of those examples um, on the map um, as well. We include a version of the map, and I stress it's a version um, because the map is always changing. Um, in this example, you can see that uh, the, the examples where you have uh, black marks on the map is examples where um, murals have been removed entirely. Um, but there is more complexity to the map. Some of the examples that are in red um, have been damaged or defaced or deteriorated. Um, so in the, this is sort of constantly um, evolving. Um, so there probably will be follow-up papers on this in about a year's time as we see how Kovic to um evolved how it responded to COVID, this being quite a, an open air, almost performative uh, form of protest. Um, and just see how things have changed um, a year from now. I think that'd be really interesting. Um, if we just go down to the bottom, um, I thought this was really interesting. We explore a little bit about the way in which uh, Coventry to Llewellyn appears outside of Wales, um, with the sort of the, the migratory narrative of Welsh nationalism and Welsh identity sort of exploring the idea of, you know, do you need Wales to be Welsh? Do, does, does Wales need to exist for Welsh identity to survive or, or can it be maintained in a different cultural context altogether? And I think this conflation um, from the Chicago Tafia group um, of a Mary Lloyd with the coverage to the Wedding mural, both in Chicago, uh, is a really fascinating extension of the Kovic to the Wedding movement. Um, so that sort of summarizes some of the things we're doing in the article. Um, the actual publication, if we go to the very top, this is from the Public Archaeologies of Frontiers uh, and Borderlands. Um, 
I think it's well worth um, a, a look. Um, you can you can download this for free. You can purchase a hard copy if you want, but the whole text is digitally open access. It's one of the reasons why I went with this publication because I have a, a strong belief in getting this academic uh, material out to as wide an audience as possible um, at as low a cost as possible, and nothing's better than free. Um, Howard Williams is sort of the mastermind putting behind this. Great contributions by Pauline Clark and Kieran Gleave um, as well. Um, take some time to explore the, the rest of this article, um, uh, rest of the book, um, if you've got the time to go through all of it. Really interesting stuff. Um, and really so it's, uh, sort of explores this idea of frontiers and borderlands, which I feel the copy of Chidawella narrative fits in really well for. So, um, I'd really appreciate your thoughts. Um, I stress my side of the research on this is ongoing. This is not a, a complete, definitive, finished piece of work. Um, the murals keep on appearing, disappearing. They're being changed all the time. So if you have any comments, observations, stick them in the box below. I'd love to have a dialogue about this. And um, we'll keep this discussion going because this will feed into um, future articles further down the road. But yeah, for now, enjoy it. You'll find the links to the publication down below. Um, and yeah, hope you enjoy it. Hope it's uh, not too uh, not too controversial for you. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I'll leave it there. Enjoy the book.